Hello. I hope you like my little demonstration experiment. Um, let me first state that I regret putting any predictions on here about uh, earthquakes. Any predictions, period. Because it distracts from my original intent. In fact, I had a bunch of comments from somebody who didn't like the way I was arguing with dashes and he stated that it's not very scientific. Then he went on to another couple of videos and said I was a kook and I forgot to take my meds. So I don't want to argue anymore. If you don't believe me, fine. I'm not even going to try to convince you. I'm just going to go about it trying to present my points and evidence as I see it. So I regret making it and in fact I don't believe that the earthquake is coming when I predicted it. I'll admit when I'm wrong because rainfall directly influences subduction, meaning if it rains, this acts as a lubricant and can actually slip uh, tectonic plates. You know, if you have liquid, sometimes it actually allows it. When it's completely dry, it doesn't allow for that slippage of the fault. So since California is in a drought, I think I'm wrong. And I don't want to get into why I believe that there is an earthquake season. It's irrelevant at this point to proving what I want. So. The predictions were out of desperation and frustration, period, and I regret it. So anyways, on to the analysis. If you notice, my earlier demonstrations had reactions, but these reactions were instantaneously and they were not spectacular. Um, they, they simply just blew the water into steam and, and, and overflowed. On the last demonstration, I was, I was trying to figure out how to pressurize the system without making it literally explode. That's why I laughed at the end of it. I was glad it went as I predicted it. And that's why I used the ice cap as a seal because I knew that it would be a weak seal. Had it been a strong seal, it would have been even more explosive. This allowed the energy out. So, uh, if you notice at about the minute mark, it starts to become reactive. The lid starts popping up. It becomes active, you hear a lot of snap, crackle, pop, and then it kind of subsides and it starts up again. It does this about every 10 to 15 seconds. It starts up and then it releases the energy, the lid pops off, and you can see that the water is dripping down and away from, on the outside, of the can. And this is why it's not reacting because the water is dripping this way. It's actually creating inside and I don't think you can see it, but it was doming. As the heat comes up, it would create a dome in the ice. And then this allows the water to follow that arc out. So it was dripping down and up and out of the edge. And there was enough gap in that seal as the rim of the can melted on the ice. It, the seal had a water layer and it would push the water out. And so you had this so it wasn't exactly airtight, but you had the water flowing out. And occasionally a drop would hit and it would react a little more. And it, then there would be steam and it would pop it out. And if you notice, it would keep doing this and then it would quiet down. That's until about the minute 47 mark when you have another small pop. And two seconds later, it's followed by a very big pop at minute 49. And this is almost like a thrust fall, which happened off Sumatra in the tsunami of 2004, a piece of earth just snaps up. And this could be an explanation why. If you notice, the edge of that lid just pops. And it, when it comes down, what happens is, the water that had been going out, and dripping out, occasionally some of it popping in, hitting the oil and creating steam. The steam was building up to such a point that there was an explosion. It, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> That was that little pop that you heard. And then what that did was lift the lid, allowing the hot gases to escape. As the hot gases escape, other air goes in to replace the vacuum. As this other air comes up, it skims the top, sucking back in moisture. So hot air comes out, cooler air comes in, and it draws the water back inside. As the more water comes in, it splashes down into the hot oil, 
It's released back up in the steam. The steam starts melting more of this, and you get a very violent reaction because now it's throwing the hot oil up, hitting the top of the dome, melting more ice, pushing the water back in, and it just starts to create this, this cycle, an explosive cycle, a cascade effect. So you start to see the lid just start popping, and then you start seeing eruptions. The first batch just kind of plops out to the side, then it starts bubbling more, and then finally, and this is, I'm laughing because I was scared, <laughs> to know how big the explosion would be, the eruption, or where it would go. I theorized that it would go straight up, because that's where it, the, the can would act like a cannon, like a chamber, like a barrel of a gun, and it would blow this stuff straight up. And that's exactly what happened to the ice. The ice was blown straight up, the liquid was blown straight up. And this is why I have no evidence of my volcano. When people say, where's your evidence? If you're this volcano of the size you're predicting erupted, the earth would be covered in seven feet of ash, there'd be radioactive material, where is it? Well, it was blown into orbit. This is like a rocket. All that material, all that ash, would be blown out into space blowing away part of our atmosphere. Also, it would take many, many years for it to fall down and it would be displaced all over the earth in, in fine, fine material over a long period of time so there wouldn't be this big accumulation. Also, the only evidence I had, geologically speaking, is the rock, the crust itself that was blown up from the explosion in the Gulf of Mexico orbited the earth and fell back down like a satellite that had a decaying orbit. And that's it. So that's where my missing evidence went. I don't want to debate no more. Uh, I don't even like doing this production. I know I'm right because I predicted what would happen and I demonstrated it in an experiment. I believe that this would be the dynamic and you imagine scaling this up. You should call uh, Mythbusters and get them to do a giant big vat with some sort of pressurized system and see how far it ejects material. Anyways, I don't want to debate. I'm not going to make many more videos. <laughs> I'll explain personal stuff on my other channel. Maybe why you think I'm odd. And, um, I don't know. That's it. I hope somebody believes me um, and investigates.